Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Tonight I'm going to be in the garden using this setup, the ASI 2600 and the Ascar 400, to photograph one of my favourite targets in the night sky, the California Nebula. Like I said, the target tonight is going to be the California Nebula and I absolutely love this target. I have photographed it before using the one-shot colour camera and as you would expect it came out very red. But tonight I want to do something slightly different and go for that SHO look. So I've seen some really cool images of the California Nebula in the Hubble palette and I just think that rainbow-like appearance um, just looks really cool, so I'm gonna give it a go. Now, it is nearly a full moon tonight, and that moon is up all night long, so I'm going to be using the HA filter tonight and get as much data as I can. I should have three, three and a half hours worth of clear skies before the clouds come in, so hopefully I can get um, a few hours of HA data. Um, I'm going to go for seven minute subs um, and I'm going to have the camera at get a gain of 100. So hopefully that should bring out quite a lot of detail. Um, but I just wanted to quickly jump into the computer and show you the framing of this target with the kit that I'm going to be using. Okay, so when I'm planning my images, the first thing I do is jump into Telescopius. It's such a fantastic tool. You can put in all of your detail about the gear that you're using down the side here. So I'm using the Ascar 400, which has a 400 millimeter focal length. I put in the sensor size of my ASI 2600, um, and then you can choose the target that you're going to photograph. So as you can see here, this is the California Nebula, and it just frames this target so nicely. Um, the setup I use, it seems like it's almost designed for this, this target. And when you have that, the nebula going diagonal in the frame, it just fits that frame perfectly. So that's what I'm going to go for. Um, I'm going to try and frame the, the target diagonally. Um, I'm going to capture as much data as I can. And then hopefully I should have a really colorful image to show you at the end of this video. Okay, so I finished work a little bit late tonight, which meant I was setting up in the dark. So I didn't record anything outside when I was uh, setting up, um, but I am collecting data now. And that first sub is just about to roll in. It's just about to pop up on screen any second now. Um, and I'll put it up on screen. And there it is. There's the first seven minute exposure. And yeah, I think that that's looking quite cool. I think uh, there's a lot of detail in there. Um, doesn't look to be too bright, too overexposed. The exposure looks quite good. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just gonna let that run. So far the forecast has been spot on today. So the clouds cleared uh, when I expected them to. And I think they're gonna roll in a bit later on this evening. So I'm gonna capture as much as I can. Um, and then I can get the S2 and the O3 at a later date. <laughs> Okay, so it is night two. I've already captured um, a few hours of HA. So tonight I'm gonna to start off with the sulfur filter and then I'm gonna switch back to the O3. Um, hopefully it's gonna stay clear all night long tonight. The forecast is looking great. Um, it's crystal clear at the moment, but I've missed about an hour of dark skies because I had to finish off a few things at work and then walk the dog. So um, hopefully I can get a full night of clear sky and split that between the sulfur and the O3 filter. So I'm just gonna finish setting up and then uh, quickly check the polar alignment and start capturing some images. Okay, so I've got the mantle set up, I've got the wires all attached. Um, I'm just going to really quickly check the polar alignment. Now the mount hasn't moved, um, it's just been under cover for the last few days while it rained. Um, but I always find that the, the, the mount is slightly off, um, so I always check polar alignment and realign uh, before each imaging session. Um, so yeah, just going to really quickly try that now. Um, first thing I need to do, 
take the lens cap off because it's just uh, failed the plate solving. So that's a, a bit of a schoolboy error. So I'm going to try that again. Um, hopefully this time it will plate solve. Move the mount 60 degrees, um, plate solve again, and then I can make the uh, small, hopefully small adjustments to the mount. Okay, so that was uh, nice and easy. It detected 168 stars um, and plate solving didn't take very long. So as I thought, it was just slightly out. Um, I always seem to find that even though the mount hasn't moved at all. Um, I don't know whether it's the wind with the big cover on or what, but um, I always find that minute adjustments are needed. So I tend to do that now. So it's just very slightly out. Um, so I'm just gonna make the really small adjustments. Okay, and it was easy as that. Just a few tiny, uh, tiny minute adjustments. Uh, plate solving's done. Now I'm ready to slew to my target and start capturing some images. So this is what a single seven minute sub exposure looks like on the S2 filter. This is with the gain set to 100 and the camera called to minus 20 and I'm really quite pleased with it. Um, I wasn't expecting a huge amount of data in there but you can clearly see the, the nebulosity in the California nebula. So I'm quite pleased with how that's looking. Um, and I just thought I'd quickly show you a comparison between this the ha and the o3 of the single sub so this is the the s2 as i mentioned this is the ha and obviously there's a huge amount of detail in there this target is uh, predominantly hydrogen alpha so um, lots of detail in the, the the single exposures for the ha i captured this a couple of weeks ago when there was pretty much a full moon and then this is tonight and um, when there's no moon up at the moment so I think that that looks quite good. But then if you compare this to the O3, there's absolutely no nebulosity in that data at all. I can't see anything. So I'm hoping when I stack all of the images together, there'll be something to pull out in post-processing. So even though the forecast said it was going to be clear all night long on the second night, unfortunately, the clouds did roll in. It was beautifully clear for the first half of the night. And then around midnight, just after the meridian flip, the clouds rolled in and did spoil the evening a little bit. And so I was really happy that I was able to switch between the S2 and the O3 filters earlier in the evening and capture some data on both. But I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate the support. And if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more content. But here is the final image. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in another video very soon. Cheers.